Hey there everyone, Atayish here and welcome to another video on the Go routine. Now this is something we are going to discuss in this video. This is something that you'll be using in real world scenario and especially if you have multiple servers. Now in the case of the cloud deployment and stuff, now we are into a position that we actually talk to a lot of databases and sometimes even the microservices. So what happens usually in the case if we are talking to multiple databases, there are some read replicas which are specialization in reading only and there are some write servers or write databases which can do read and write both. So these are kind of a common situation. Some of your APIs talk to the read servers only, some of them talk to the read and write servers both. Now apart from this, there are other cases in which if you have microservices and some of the microservices actually talk to other microservices and you can actually use GoRoutines there. You can launch a thread which can talk to different uh, microservices and pull the data from there. Or another case might be, you might be having uh, three different API endpoints and you want to bring the data from all those endpoints and you can launch up a different method in different thread for all of that. So we're gonna replicate a scenario which is almost similar to that. So we're gonna go ahead and comment a whole lot of it so that maybe you want to refer it later on. So I'm gonna go ahead and comment all of this so that it doesn't bother us. I know for some people even come and bother them, but this is what we got up here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to simply define a method, which is, uh, let's call this one as get status code. So what this method does, it makes a request to the websites and gets a status code, that's it. I don't know why you would do that, but this is the case. We could have actually pinged to different APIs and can get that, but handling the APIs and JSON, uh, we could have deviated easily. So we're gonna go ahead like this. Now all it expects that you'll be giving me some end point and I can just go ahead and ping it up there. Not ping, actually get a status code from HTTP. This will be a type of string and there we go. Now let's go ahead and work on with that. First, we're gonna say, hey, HTTP, uh, just go ahead and fire up a get method onto this. And where you're going to fire this, we need an endpoint for that. So let's go ahead and do that. Now once this is being all done, it will either give me a result or will give me an error. So let's go ahead and use that. Now we'll proceed with caution. So we're gonna say that if the error is not equals to nil, then obviously there is something wrong in the endpoint. So we're gonna say, oops, in endpoint. And otherwise, if this is not the case, then obviously we have got some of the results. So we're gonna pull down the status code. So let's go ahead and work on with that. So in another case, we're gonna go ahead and simply go ahead and print out uh, something like this. We'll be saying uh, like 200 status code for a website. So this is how we'll be working with that. So now we need to replace these things with our uh, placeholder. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is an integer. So we can go ahead and say a person D up here. And in place of website, we can go ahead and say person S. And now let's go ahead and do the fill in the blanks. So we're gonna say, hey, result, you do have a status, status code. I hope I wrote that correctly. I hope this is in this format only. And uh, another thing we need to fill up is the website itself. So let's go ahead and say endpoint. That's all what we have. Let's go ahead and save this one. So should be fairly simple. Now what we need is go inside this main method and define a few websites through which we can uh, go ahead and work on with that. So we will be going like this. We'll be calling this as website list. And this list is going to be like this, an array of string, not array, a slice of string. And let's go ahead and fill up some values into it. So the first one, let's go ahead and say https colon slash slash lco.dev, of course, why not? And let's get a couple of others as well. We are gonna go ahead and say go.dev because why not? Let's duplicate this and we are gonna say Google dot in or dot com dot com. Okay, why are you here? My bad, there we go. Let's have a couple of others as well. We are going to have fb.com, which is again a shorthand for facebook.com. Uh, what else we got? Maybe github.com or you, you can just go ahead and fill up more websites up here in case you want to have that. Now all we got to do up here is run a simple loop. We're gonna go ahead and say that let's use the range based loop for web and that is going to be range in website list just like that 
and then we need to use this web so how we're going to use this web we're going to call our method which is just getting the status code so we're going to say get status code and pass on this instance of the web because we are looping through so everybody is just getting there so this should be it let's go ahead and save this and see how many errors we are going to get up here let's go ahead clean this up and run that now this is going to go on to each website uh, so we we got that invalid memory address pointer so we got some of the issues and it says percent s is having some of the issue with the website itself so let me go ahead and clean this up okay got the error it was pretty easy one it is not print ln it is printf i'm pretty sure you might have already figured that out uh, but hopefully now we will have some better expectation of the results uh, obviously this is going to take some time and this is still says it's a invalid memory address and violation of the code let's go ahead and see what's the another issue that we are having so it seems like we are having some of the issues in the memory address while we while we are rewriting some of the values up here let's go ahead and cut this out and wrap this up so that we have at least some of the result it doesn't just panic it out like that so hopefully now let's try it one more time okay let's run this one and it's always giving me issues in the endpoint of Google so now it is much better and I don't believe that Google is down I, I really I really refuse to believe that uh, yeah because there is triple O in my Google come on uh, that's really bad but again we got the errors up here so there we go status code is all 200 and okay for all of the code and they are running nicely but they are taking a little bit while to execute we can do it much more faster if we just roll out different threads and can fire up the go routines there so let's go ahead and try that and obviously the next step that you might want to take is let me just close it down is hey i'm not gonna go ahead and call this as get status i know that if i put up a go keyword up here then it's going to launch multiple threads or go coroutines and then it's gonna just do the job and that's where you are a little bit wrong my friend that's where you are wrong <laughs> a little bit notice here it doesn't gives you any reply at all you get the reason the reason is that we are not waiting in the main method so that it it just waits a little bit for all those go coroutines to come back and report to us and that is a problem obviously you might say that we can solve this by time dot millisecond uh, yes but we don't want to do uh, go into that rabbit hole again we want to use a package sync up here so let me walk you through that how these weight groups are utilized so that we can have a better response and result so the first thing that we're going to do is let me close this one first is we need a variable which is going to be a weight group so let's go ahead and declare that as global because i'll be passing it into different methods so that's what we are going to have now usually you don't create a, a variable like this in majority of the cases you'll be creating a pointer because you pass on a reference of this i'll walk you through that scenario as well but right now let's go to the simple one and then we go ahead and say hey sync and from the sync, we are going to just call in the weight group. Now let's go ahead and see that how this weight group actually works. So the very first thing you are going to see here is these weight groups. So notice here, type weight group and you can add done and weight. So what basically it works is, weight group is kind of a modified version or a very advanced steroid version of the time.sleep or time.weight, whatever you say. Now, as soon as you go ahead and use this weight group, you have two jobs to, to be done, basically three. So the first one is add. That means as soon as a go routine is being created, you go ahead and add that into this weight group so that this guy is responsible for management. It says, hey, uh, there is one guy who is out there and I will not end my method till that guy is back. And there might be five guys out. Uh, five go routines and until unless they are back i will not end it so this is how you do it end and once your job is done and that go routine whatever you have sent is done with its work then it is your responsibility to call for done and optionally you can use wait whenever you like that my job is not done i should wait here so this is how basically these three method actually works let's go ahead and try to implement them Okay, now that I have this weight group, and again, a big note here, usually these are pointers. Uh, in this case, it's fine that we have this like uh, go up here. Now notice here, uh, we go ahead and say go get status code and we go ahead and first use case up, uh, come up here. We are gonna say weight group and we're gonna say dot add and one. Now this one, uh, I cannot clear this one right here because there is 
there is a requirement of a little bit more code. Right now, just assume we are going to just pass on that there is just one Go coroutine which you are firing up. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, once this is all done, this second part, which is a weight group dot weight, always, usually always goes at the end of the main method or whatever the method is being called out. Because this guy is only responsible for not allowing my main method to finish. This will say, hey, I cannot allow you to just go ahead and complete because my other friends, weight groups, are still haven't given me the signal that you can just go ahead and all be done. Now, another part of this weight group comes up into this status code. Now, into this status code, feel free to write it wherever you like, but this is where the defer keyword actually comes in. So we're going to use the defer and we're going to say, hey, weight group, you have to actually pass on a signal which is done. So I hope you are getting the status up here. So it is your responsibility to pass on a signal which is done that, hey, I'm done with whatever I was supposed to be doing. And this weight group has a responsibility of saying, hey, main, please don't just uh, exit yet. Some of my friends are coming in. And the job of this, this uh, wg.add is to keep on adding the go coroutines number that how many of my friends have been out there. In this case, we have just one because there is just one call happening, but there can be a situation where there might be five or 10 different others. Okay, a uh, little bit more, but uh, let's go ahead and run this one. And now we can see that all of them are going and uh, in theory, this is much more faster. It is actually faster, but uh, since we have just very basic stuff being done here, that's why I told you we need to have a different mindset. So now that you know a little bit on these weight groups, I would like to uh, give you more examples on this one, modifying this a little bit further, but we'll have a separate file for that one. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next video.